So yeah, my name is Osgur. Um, I've been working as a driving instructor last 16 years in London. Uh, unfortunately, I still teach people how to drive a car on a part-time basis. Uh, but most of my life is about running our community cycling club and uh, promote active travel. Um, I wasn't into cycling until 2018. That year, I was very bored with my job and doing the same routine every day, as you can imagine, driving instructor's life in London. I wanted to do something different, break my boring routine and step out of my comfort zone. I bought a cheapest touring bike, practice about three weeks, and in June 2018, I cycled solo from London to Istanbul in 46 days. I cycled 11 countries and covered over 2,100 miles. Before this long journey, I never cycled more than 10 miles in my life or had a clue how to repair a puncture. I discovered one thing from this cycling journey is um, power of cycling. Cycling changed my life more than anything else. Cycling has enriched my life as I feel stronger, more confident, and happier. Uh, the following year after the journey, I initiated and set up first cycling club in my Turkish-speaking community, living in North London, in, in Edmonton. We named our club Londra Bisiklet Kulübü, which means in English, London Cycling Club. Um, Edmonton in Anfield Borough is one of the most deprived area in London and has large number of Turkish, Kurdish, Cypriot and Bulgarian communities. These groups are significantly underrepresented in cycling and have so many barriers to participate cycling. Our club, based in Churchfield Recreation Ground in uh, Edmonton, uh, we provide free cycle training sessions for children and adults, organize social bike rides, bike repair workshops, and also provide bike loan scheme as well. Uh, we also have a women-only walking and well-being group. Our community cycling club also partnered with British Ali Federation charity, Anfield Cycling Campaign, and Better Streets for Anfield. We're basically working together and we promote um, active travel in our borough. Uh, we share the same community grant with British Alevi Federation Charity, which we reach and engage so many Turkish and Kurdish people. Uh, we introduced cycling activities to hundreds of women and children in the last four years. Um, I think understanding the community uh, you work with is very important. Um, for instance, most of the Turkish-speaking community uh, emigrated to UK in early 90s and mainly from rural areas from Turkey. They came here for economical reasons and for better life. For example, car ownership is seen as uh, prestigious in our community and cycling is still seen by some Turkish people as an activity for males of low status. It takes time to change people's behavior and attitudes towards cycling and walking. Uh, yeah, the aim of London Cycling Club is uh, to remove some of the barriers and make cycling more inclusive in Anfield and possibly in North London. Um, as a driving instructor, um, I've been covering Anfield driving test routes the last 16 years and seen more and more traffic every single day. Um, it is not sustainable. It can go like this. That's why I strongly believe active travel um, we need more 20 mile speed limits on our roads, more school streets and uh, low traffic neighborhoods. And last year, um, our cycling club um, received so many abus abusive messages on social media because our club um, sported recent LTNs in Haringey and so many people wasn't about wasn't happy about our sport for LTN, especially in our Turkish speaking community. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it just takes time to change people's behavior that, uh, I mean, one-to-one -one and sometimes in our group, we discuss about 
how can we how can we uh, encourage people to uh, cycle rather than um, rather than uh, driving? And uh, we managed to convince some people uh, that, especially short journeys, they should think about walking or cycling instead of um, driving. And uh, although we convinced some people, uh, we couldn't convince most of the people in our community because they basically they love their cars. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the good thing is um, <laughs> I received Active Travel Hero Award from London Cycling Company last year because we received so many abusive languages from uh, our community because of our sport to LTNs. But yeah, I mean, um, we are happy to be in Anfield. Um, we love our borough. Um, and then we want to be part of this um, uh, active travel um, uh, campaign. And it's, we are quite, quite happy about this. And then, and, and making a change is not easy. It, it will take some time, uh, but we are working on it. I mean, I'm intrigued on your your trip to Istanbul. Did you spend nights in hotels or did you camp or <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, a bit of both, actually. Um, so the journey took 46 days. And uh, I had my tent with me, sleeping in you know, bags and everything. Um, I had all my gears and everything. So, uh, I mean, about five, six days, I slept in a tent um, and few times I used some of the um, um, applications. I mean, if you are aware of the um, warm showers and um, car couch surfing or something like that, um, these are the, some applications that you can go and stay at people's home. So I, I used some of them as well. So you can basically travel without paying the rent as okay. well. So, Were you alone? Were you alone? Or, or uh, yes, yes, oh, yes, well I was alone. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And thank you, and sometimes and sometimes I had to stay in uh, bed and breakfasts and then also used Airbnb. So so also yeah. it must be fantastic for you as a learning experience. It's just just plain enjoyable. Yeah, it was fantastic actually. And, I mean I, and, I, and I, what did what did your yeah. family in Turkey think when you turned up on a bicycle? So, <laughs> hasn't he done well? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So it was it was a bit of actually uh, in a in a journey. Uh, it wasn't I wasn't cyclist before. I didn't have any experience. Uh, I just practiced about three weeks and then start cycling. Uh, but I read other people's experiences and I re realized that Europe is easy to cycle and most of the parts of the Europe and they have beautiful beautiful cycle lanes in um, in, in Holland in in Germany Austria. And um, so I've done my plan as well. And um, uh, it was quite um, hard, actually. I mean, you need to be ready for, uh, not physically, not physically, but mentally, you need to be prepared yourself, which I did prepare myself. I needed, I needed some challenge in my life. That was lucky because every day as a driving instructor, I'm sitting on a car and just driving, teaching people. And it's just quite a boring job. Yeah. I just needed to come out from this comfort zone and do something different which i did yeah so having spent sort of a fair bit of well a time in with them um, usger and the group i think uh, one of the things uh, which is quite interesting uh with the alibi uh community is um their connection with nature and i think they do have a a, a very strong connection um which um especially as a lot uh maybe the the, the um uh, the families came from uh, farming backgrounds, uh, but the um, but the, the, there is that culture of, of being close to nature and and a valuing of nature uh, within the community um, uh, in the uh, with the Alavi community. I would just Oscar, would would you like to maybe talk a little bit about about that? Um, because I know um, so there is a very strong car culture within uh, within Turks, but yeah. it's often forgotten that you do have that other side, uh, sort of with a great environmental awareness and um, and valuing nature. Yes, David, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, where we based in British Ali Federation Charity Grant, uh, so majority of the people uh, are um, Alivi, following Alivi faith, um, uh, which is different than uh, Islam or Muslim. 
And there's about 15 million people in Turkey, and a majority of the people here is from Alevi background. Um, I'm not very good with Alevi philosophy, uh, not very religious, but um, uh, all I know is uh, we respect nature. Uh, Alevi people, uh, faith is respect nature and animals and everything. Uh, and uh, sustainability is something that um, we care about. We, although we are not doing it practically, you know, as a community, but uh, we care about the environment. And, and I think it's very, very important. Uh, it's, it's a quite peaceful um, belief. Uh, we were always in minority in Turkey. Uh, we, will, we were always hiding our identity in Turkey because of uh, Sunni Islam's, uh, you know, problems. But um, I can tell that uh, people are open-minded uh, for a change. Um, what we need to do is we need to work on that, that, um, you know, if you want, if you are really, if you really care about the environment, you have to care about sustainability. You have to care about active travel. You have to care about, um, you know, other things as well, uh, and, and protect this environment and, and everything. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that we should work on. Uh, but I'm not, you know, the guy that to tell you that what I live in faith is because I'm not very good on that, David. Um, but I will definitely study a bit more on this one, and then uh, I'll come up on this. Thank you. Okay, Basil. Um, there's another aspect of um, of LBK's work which Özgür didn't mention, and that is teaching um, Turkish women or, or women of Turkish background to cycle. So I'm interested in what, why, why you're doing that, and how the the women are benefiting from it. For instance, are they going on to use cycling as a transport mean as a means of transport or they're just doing it for social and recreational purposes um yeah, yeah very good question i mean uh when we set up our cycling club four years ago uh, our idea was just with a small group social rights that was our aim just do some social rights and after a few months later we received so many requests from the um the women from our community that uh, they said that they really want to join our club, but they don't know how to cycle. And then we realized that big majority of the women in our community never had a chance to cycle. Um, and then we said that, okay, we have to do some pr project for them. Um, and then, so last few years, yeah, we, we start providing cycle train stations only for women. Uh, first of all, we realized that there are a number of um, barriers starting cycling like um, there are cultural and language barriers um, there are um, some women are for example overweight and they want to get a cycle training in a small group so they don't want everyone to see them um, so we realize these problems and then we overcome some of these barriers um, and introduce cycling for women and it, it worked really well um, I mean, it, two years ago, we um, did one project and in uh, Edmonton, uh, in Anfield, um, we uh, donated over uh, 32 bikes to low-income uh, ethnic minority women uh, because we realized that we need to support more of women uh, and children as well. Okay, Anthony, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I was going to mention the... Uh, car culture in Turkey. Do you think it's any worse than it is in England? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you need to understand the community. Actually, uh, our community came to uh, mainly came to UK in nineteen nineties, and for a better economical, you know, uh, life in here. And um, car ownership is. I mean, I can tell in our community center that sometimes people come with Porsche cars, you know, nice cars. And they kind of, sh some of the people, not all of them, but some of them are likes to show off. Um, so cycling is not that popular in that way. So having a car, BMW or Mercedes, and, you know, that shows that you know, economically you are in a good position. Um, so we need to change that percentage. We need to change that those ideas. Um, I think if we tell them more about health benefits of cycling, if we tell them more about environmental benefits uh, of cycling um i think we start you know uh, uh changing 
some people's behaviors and minds on that. Yeah, right. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who would like to ask a question? No one at all. Okay, Oscar. I mean, you you've obviously done a great deal of work, and and you know you got people involved. For those people who might be interested in starting a cycling club, and I guess this comes to death to David later when we maybe talk about active travel and transport. But if anybody who wanted to start a cycling club, how difficult is it? How did you go about it? How did you get people involved? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite a good question. I mean, one of the good reasons is uh, we we use social media uh, quite active, and uh, because we realize that uh, our people don't like to read too much, uh, or if you share photo, it's not like that powerful. But when you show our activities with the video, people click on that and then wonder what is going on in there. I think it's one of the best stories just sharing more videos on social media, uh, and then we also engage, uh, reach and engage so many people through our community center. It, it was our advantage. And I think collaboration also plays an important role in that we collaborated with Anfield Council. And uh, at the beginning, I should mention that at the beginning when we provided cycle training sessions, uh, David, uh, David Hilliard, our cycling instructor, uh, helped us a lot. Uh, he shared his own experiences with us, and he, he really, really contributed a lot in, in our cycling club. I mean, if someone wants to set up a cycling club, it's good to work with um, people with experience um, and then collaborate with a bit, bit more with the local councils and, you know, and community groups. Hey, Vicky, you've got a hand up. This takes me a long time to unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. That was extraordinary. Um, first of all, I want to say how sad I am to hear that you got abuse uh, as a result of your support for low, low, low traffic neighbourhoods, because whatever people think, that's really unnecessary and cruel. Um, but I, you talked about video, and I wanted to ask if you filmed while you were travelling, and have you had a chance to edit it and make a movie yet? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> that, I mean, uh, I've got a lot of small videos uh, um, and drone stages. I was also using drones and taking good shots. Um, that's the bit that I felt because all my efforts last four years, all my effort went into our cycling club. And every single day we are making, we are doing new projects um, and we are growing as a cycling organization. And uh, which is, well, I'm very happy about it. But in one way, uh, I'm quite sad that I couldn't tell this story as a, with a small documentary film yet. But I will do it. I will definitely, but I don't know when. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a lot of good, I mean, good photos and videos. Uh, and I will tell this story um, near future. But first of all, um, I want to focus on growing our cycling organization. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what we are doing at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Oscar, and uh, good to see you uh, spreading the good word again. I I guess the question for me is, what's one thing that you would change in Enfield so that more people took up active travel, uh, cycling, and walking? One one thing you would change. Um. Uh, well, in my opinion, everyone is on social media, and. Let's tell the story in short videos why we need active travel. We show heavy traffic on A10, on everywhere in Enfield. People stuck in traffic. Let's take little videos and then tell the story like why we need active travel. It cannot mm -hmm. go like this. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I can, I mean, uh, if you set up an active travel group in this, um, uh, you know, forum, I will be happy to um, contribute this with videos or anything else. But if you want to change people's behavior, you have to tell them the messages. Uh, and best way to tell the message is short video. Gotcha. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Good answer. Yeah.